Hello and welcome everyone. Today we will summarize the all of the IDSA guidelines on the gram negative infections. So if we start so we start with the extended spectrum beta lactamase in that uh, if you look for uncomplicated cystitis you start with nitrofurantoin or trimethoprim sulfamethoxazone. Apart from that you can give either ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin or carbapenems. If it is more complicated that is it's a pyelonephritis or a complicated UTI then you can do trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, fluoroquinolones or you can add the carbapenems. Here you can also give aminoglycosides. Now if the infection is outside the UTI then you should go for meropenem, imipenem or artapenem. Now if the patient is critically ill it is better to avoid artapenem because the albumin is affected here. Now here you need to avoid tazobactam because tazobactam is not a very good drug which will counteract this ESBL. So it is better to avoid piperacillin and cefepime. In these cases it is better not to use septazidim avibactam, meropenem, vabrobactam, imipenem, silastatin, relibactam or cefidurocol. This must be used only as reserve agents. Now next we go to AMPC producing organisms. In, if it is AMPC and if it is uncomplicated UTI, then you go for nitrofurantoin, trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, fluoroquinolones, and aminoglycosides. If it is not, if it is complicated, then you can give cefepime. Cefepime can also be given both for UTI as well as outside UTI. Here you need to avoid piperacillin and ceftriaxone, which are inducer of AMPC production. While the BLBLIs, that the newer BLBLIs are the reserve agents. If you are dealing with CRE, carbapenem resistance enterobacteriaceae, and if it is an uncomplicated case, you should go for nitrofurantoin and trimethoprim. If it is uh, not working, then you can escalate to fluoroquinolones, cholestin, oral phosphomycin, or the newer BLBLI agents. If it is a UTI or a pyelonephritis, then you go for trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, or you can give the newer BLBLI agents. However, the infection is outside the urinary tract, it is always better to go for the newer BLBLI agents, that is septazidim abibactam, meropenem abibactam, or imipenem silastatin relibactam. If you are suspecting a metallobetalactam is producing isolate, then you add astrionam to the septazidim abibactam, or you can give a sept Cefiderocol monotherapy. Here again the reserve drug is Cefiderocol. The next we go is Pseudomonas that is difficult to treat resistance. Here the drug of choice for uncomplicated UTI as well as complicated UTI as well as outside infection. So the drug of choice is Ceftolozin Tazobactam in all these three cases. Apart from that you can use the uh, newer BLBLI agents. However if it is uncomplicated UTI you can also give a single dose of aminoglycoside which is equally good. Now again cefiderocol is a reserve agent over here. Regarding carbapenem resistance acinetobacter bomani that is crab. In this you go for a combination therapy in that combination one of the drug is preferably ampicillin sulbactam. Apart from this ampicillin sulbactam you can add minocycline, tgcycline, polymyxin or cefiderocol. Now again cefiderocol remains a reserve drug in all these infections. Finally strenotrophomonas maltophilia. In strenotrophomonas your primary drug must be trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. With this you can add minocycline, tgcycline, cefiderocol or levofloxacin. Or if it is a critically ill patient then you give septazidim avibactam astrionam. Now while you are de-escalating it is always better not to give levofloxacin as a singular agent therapy in this particular infection. It is You can give any one of these as single therapies but you cannot give levofloxacin. And most of the cases if you are de-escalating to oral therapy you better go for trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole as a de-escalation to oral therapy once the patient's infection is in control. So next we discuss the antibiotic and their dosages that are need to be given in these particular infections. So coming first is polymyxin and cholestin. These we will discuss in a separate video because currently they are not recommending it as a therapy in most of the infections. 
but if it is to be used how it is to be used we will discuss in a detailed video later on regarding tg cycline you give a 200 mg iv bolus that is a initial dose followed by 100 mg iv every 12 hourly tobramycin as we have said tobramycin is to be given a single dosage for uncomplicated infections there you give 5 mg per kg per dose iv that is a singular dose if it is a complicated infection you can add it as a 7 mg per kg iv dosage now here you must keep in mind in these complicated cases if you are adding you must keep in mind that the patient is in a lesser risk of developing renal failure regarding trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole for cystitis the trimethoprim component is 160 bd while for all the other infections it is better to go 12 mg per kg per day divided at least tds or bd dose the maximum dosage of trimethoprim that you can give per day is 960 so in most of the cases if it is complicated you go with 960 only ciprofloxacin for cystitis 400 mg iv bd 500 mg per hour bd in all other infection it is to be given 8 hourly now ertapenem 1 g iv 24 hourly infusion over 30 minutes uh gentamicin again uncomplicated single dose 5 mg per kg for pyelonephritis it is 7 mg per kg now regarding the imipenem silastatin imipenem silastatin is uh, 500 mg iv every 6 hourly infused over 30 minutes all other cases it is uh, 500 mg every 6 hourly over 3 hours so in most of the complicated cases is always best to go for infusion of most of the beta lactam agent drugs over 3 hour infusions same with ralibactam uh, regarding levofloxacin uh, 750 mg 24 hourly dose that is once daily you give levofloxacin 750 mg in meropenem for all infections go for 2 mg 2 grams iv every 8 hourly with a infusion over 3 hours regarding uh, minocycline it is 200 mg iv bd dosage amikacin again uncomplicated you go for 15 for pyelonephritis also you go for 15 ampicillin this is important because the daily dosage of at least 6 to 9 grams of sulbactam must be given so potential infusions include 9 grams of ampicillin sulbactam every 8 hourly infused over 4 hours now uh, 27 grams of ampicillin sulbactam iv as a continuous infusion can also be given now the other thing is 3 grams of ampicillin sulbactam that is 2 gram ampicillin with 1 gram sulbactam every 4 hourly can be infused over 30 minutes cefepime for complicated cases 2 grams iv 8 hourly 3 hours infusion cefidrocol 2 grams iv 8 hourly 3 hours infusion ceftazidim amebactam 2.5 grams 8 hourly 3 hours infusion astronam you give the dosage of the ceftazidim amebactam as prescribed and astronam is 2 grams iv 6 hourly so if you can give 6 hourly give 2 grams iv of astronam regarding the ceftolozin tazobactam it is 1.5 grams iv 8 hourly infused over 1 hour thank you for your patience